Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, in terms of learning the parts of speech, I had trouble with this a couple of years ago. So what I've been starting to use is something called Montessori symbols. Say, say it again. Um, it's called Montessori symbols. Is that Mariah? Montessori? Montessori, Montessori sorry. Montessori. Okay, Montessori <laughs> symbols. Uh -huh. And basically, it actually makes a lot of sense to me. And mm -hmm. what they do is they have different symbols for what uh, for the different parts of speech so for uh -huh. example um red one right here would be a verb uh-huh because a verb can move and go left and right and then they would have a black triangle and the black triangle would actually be a noun uh -huh. and you would mark, map out your sentences let me see if i can okay mm -hmm. and what while you're like. doing that i'm going to get something to show you guys too there we go. Okay, this one. Mine was a free one that I got, but I'll see if I can share that one with you guys here. So basically, they use if I can yeah. get a bigger photo. Okay. This sorry, this is the biggest I can get. Um the black the black triangle is a noun. So a noun name is a person, place, thing, or idea, and there's a meaning behind it, and it's black because black stands for carbon, which is one of the strongest, I think they said man-made materials out there. And triangle is the strongest shape. So you need one in every you need a noun in every sentence that you have. Uh -huh. Those and are cool associations. Yeah, and if you have look at the article and the adjective, they are also triangles because they always go with the noun. So you can see the relationships between between the sentences. Mm -hmm. And then a pronoun will replace a noun. So it's also a triangle. Mm -hmm. A preposition will show the connection. So it's almost like a bridge. Mm -hmm. And then you have your verbs, which are round, and then your adverbs, which describes a verb and adjective or an adverb, and then you've got your conjunction and your interjections. Mm -hmm. So what I did with this one is I would just give the students, uh, I'll see if I can buy, I've bought a packet on Teachers Pay Teachers, mm -hmm. but you can get them to look at a sentence. So it'd be like the cat walks, mm -hmm. and then they would have to put the grammar symbol Great. on top. Yeah, And it becomes a lot more interactive. And if you wanted to take it a step further, what you could do is just give them the different parts of speech. And then mm -hmm. once you do that, they have to create their own sentences following the pattern that you give. So and one of the things that you were saying about scaffolding is, and you're going to see this in some of the slides that I present, that's a really good example of scaffolding. Identify the words first and their function. And then I give one noun, you give one noun, and then you decide on nouns that go in a certain semantic category or that could be clustered in something that you write. And then... Um, <clears throat> and then they do it, uh, finishing a sentence that you start, and then finally they do it on their own. That's really good scaffolding. That's really good scaffolding. This is, and I don't know if I put this, oh, I'll just put it here, underneath the Oki camera. <laughs> um, these are my cards um, from Step Up to Write. No, no. From... I'm going to remember the name in one minute. Um, are you seeing that upside down, guys, or right side up? Upside down. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. So this is an article. And then on the back side, it says, A and the are articles. And then when it talks about a noun, and, you know, this is very complex, but you don't have to make it complex. It can be proper or common. There's a many, many, many lessons. This happens to be what does a noun do in a sentence? But this is the cool part. So a noun is a person or a place or a thing or an idea. And if you have a word in a sentence and it will fit in this blank, two trees, the tree, tree is a noun. 
So it's really from for I've always liked these. And then like you said, Lisa, that you had a sentence and you um, identified all of the different um, parts of speech in the sentence. So you take these cards and a sentence and you show what are the different words in order in the sentence. Oh, that's an article and then there's an adjective and then there's a noun and then there's whatever it is and you build it that way. And again, it's <clears throat> it's very manipulative and very interactive. Um, and I know I've told you guys the name before. Um, it's Winston Grammar. Winston Grammar. I kept a few of my things. Winston Grammar was one of them. And then they have books that go along with it with all kinds of sentences that you can use. So I like that stuff. Anybody else got ideas of what we could be adding to this kind of? Can I just oh. ask a question, Sasha, about sure, your outline? Sure, sure, Liz. So we went down, when you were in the function part, what, uh -huh. what was the E? What's the E in there? Oh, and that's oh. elaborations, examples. Ah, right. It's it's taking a, a reason or a detail or a fact and really giving more information about it, being very explicit, um, elaborating on it. You know how our kids, you know, don't do that. <laughs> so this is pure step up to writing stuff. I mean, and I I I had the fortune to uh, learn with. Um, Maureen Almond, who 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 did does who's the author of Step Up, and as far as I'm concerned, she's just you know one of those golden heroes who, you know, I've learned so 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 much from and used it for years, just like the uh, program that um, you were talking about, Lisa. People using it, you know, for 20 years or something. Mm -hmm. So let me show you what I uh, what I had prepared and we can go through it or not you know uh we can tangent off it um but it's it's just some examples of activities um that might go along with that outline that i just gave you so how do we operationalize that so um Another person who I really love, who's got great stuff, is William Van Cleve's stuff on, on writing. I mean, his, he's just got so many activities and so many resources. And I, when I'm planning my lessons, I'm always going to him, his books, because they're so good. So he has a whole section on parts of speech. So we want to make sure that our students know about these parts of speech and then can do simple sentences and then go from there with different coordinating conjunctions. So of course, I'm going to stop share. Let's, I don't want to go over stuff that you guys already know. Like if I said, what, what are the, what is the structure of a simple sentence? What's the simplest structure that you can think of? Anybody? Lori, what's the simplest sentence that you could think of? I can't hear you. <laughs> I got subject and a pred predicate. Exactly. So, and I love, I love um, making it visual. So a sentence, this um, horizontal line stands for a sentence and then that sentence two parts that have to be in it is we must have a subject and we must have a predicate that's the basic simplest mm -hmm. sentence that that you could have he ran um meg slept my baby is sleeping <laughs> Um, but we, these are like big, um, high back. These are big 
words and, and our kids have to know what they mean. And so in a subject, it's telling us the um, who or what, and it can be a noun or a pronoun. And in the predicate, predicate is actually an interesting thing. It's the verb, and that can be action, the action in the sentence, or it can be a helping, it can also have a helping verb. Um, and there's one more that my mind isn't thinking of. Um, but we also can have in the predicate a, another noun that is relating to the verb, that's completing the thought, that's tied to um, the um, action word, and that's the object of the predicate. So that's part of the predicate. And we can, that's the simplest of sentences. And we could have our kids build those, you know, till the cows come home with many, many, many different topics. What's another simple sentence structure? Compound sentences. Um, okay, what do you mean by compound sentence? Like with a, a basic conjunction in the middle. Okay, is it like in the middle of two simple sentences or is it in the middle of something else? You sound as tired as I am, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the middle okay, of the day. I'm going to help you. <laughs> so a simple sentence can also have two subjects with an and to connect them oh. and a verb. So we have two subjects. Um, Steve and Martin played b uh, banjo. Okay, that's also a simple sentence. I could also have one subject. Are you still seeing this? Ooh. I could have one subject, but I could have two verbs connected by the word and. So these are verbs, and this is one subject. So um, Russ... Um, kayaked and fished off the coast of Maine. Okay? Mm. So that's a simple sentence too. And there's two more. I could have all of these and I could have two objects to any one of these formulas, these, these graphs. So I could have um, kayaked in a boat and fished with a rod or fished, used a fishing rod. <laughs> okay, those would be objects. So I could have double, I could have double objects also. Okay, so these are objects. And then finally, the last type of simple sentence is I can have two subjects connected by the word and, and I could also have two verbs connected by the word and. Notice the conjunction is between the subjects or the conjunction and is between the verbs or it's between the objects. Those are all simple sentences. And you can, you can scaffold this a whole lot. I'm going to say I, I might have a bunch of nouns on cards and a bunch of verbs. And usually you use the past tense. It makes the sentence easier. I don't know why. Um, and we could build all kinds of sentences that way. Sasha, what yeah? are these, is this also from what you were saying, the, was it Winston grammar? All the No, the this is... This, this is me pulling together a thousand different things. <laughs> and this is my simplification of it. Um, it um, let's see. Diagramming sentences. If you Google diagramming sentences, you'll find all this. So diagramming simple sentences. It's just 
I don't know where I learned this anymore. There um, is a um, website, uh, uh, Grammar Revolution, that I have begun to use. Um, okay. I'll see if I can. Find, and she has, um, she does all of this diagram, diagramming. She starts okay. with the simple, and it's called Grammar Revolution. If you look it up, it'll yeah. bring you to her site. And I, I may, have started I'm, to use yeah. that. Yeah, I may have uh, had her books before I moved. <laughs> they didn't make the cut. <laughs> and they're really good. They're really good, Joanne. Okay, so there's that whole, that's a whole bunch of work, isn't it? Right? Right? That's lots of lessons. But that's the simple sense. And now that's upside down, isn't it? There. So we just come we've talked about how do I teach, you know, I've got to do a whole lot of things with how do I teach nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and then we got to stick them into simple sentences. And once your kids can do those simple sentences, you could have a paragraph that is only built with simple sentences. But you could have a great deal of variety, couldn't you? Because you could have one of these four different ways of building a simple sentence, right? Right? So um, let's, let's talk about that because I want to segue to that early. So I could teach my students about parts of speech and I could teach them simple sentences. And I'm going to get my step up to writing book. And Step Up to Writing has like a whole bunch of different ways of creating topic sentences. And the, and the ones, there's like one it's called, and I can put this here. Okay, so one of their topic sentence types can i i can make that bigger for you can't i that is that better no i have oh i did something wrong i'm sorry i probably i took a camera shot because i hit the top of the camera okay oh that's better though it's Okay, if I had visual spatial problem solving, I would be better at this. Okay, so a power topic sentence is a topic sentence that has numbers in it. It's a number topic sentence, but it's a simple sentence and it says things like um, who or what did something when and where. And so what they then do is they give you examples. Let's see, what does it say here? What? two movies released receive two movies received great reviews so the subject is movies the verb received and reviews is the object that's a simple sentence it also has a prepositional phrase that tells you when and it has your number word or this one the next one young men and women so that's your two subjects serving in the military make a number of sacrifices so the kernel sentence there is men and women make sacrifices and that's a simple sentence too isn't it so you can take a simple sentence and have it be a um, topic sentence and you could also take a number of simple sentences and have them be uh, reasons that support your topic and elaborations. I'm going to show you all of those things, reasons, details, and facts, but I wanted you to see, oh, I can take a simple sentence and it can function as any sentence in the paragraph. Okay? Is this making sense, guys? You, did you hear all that? Okay. 
technology at late at night. It's 8.30 at night, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share again and see what else I had here to show you. Okay, so if I want to create a complex sentence, a complex sentence essentially is made out of two simple sentences. So you take two of these, and now what you're doing is you're sticking them together with a conjunction. But it's not and, okay? Um, so you're using your simple sentences, you stick it together. The difference between a dependent and an independent clause is only the conjunction. The conjunction takes an independent clause and makes it dependent. And when you have a complex sentence, what you need to do is the two sentences that you're sticking together should have a relationship, right? That's why they're in one sentence. Mm -hmm. And the conjunction is the word that tells you, um, that tells you the relationship. So are you seeing my, my slides or just the OK cam? The slides. Okay, you did see the slide, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back to share. So, um, the different clauses are clauses. What makes something dependent is that the conjunction is in front of it, okay? Um, and the, con so here's an example. Eat. You have never kayaked before. That's a simple sentence. Um, learning to paddle a kayak is a simple task. Both of those are simple sentences, but if I put the, conjun the, the conjunction even if before the first simple sentence, this whole clause becomes dependent. Okay? So let's look at some of the subordinating conjunctions that show the relationship between the two clauses in a complex sentence. So after, even if, if, before, because, rather than, unless, whenever. So some of these are cause and effect. Some of them are um, time related and one of the things that most kids don't get is what do these things mean? What do these conjunctions, how do they explain the um, relationship between the two simple sentences that we're sticking together? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, so to me, once I see that this way, that um, a, that a uh, complex sentence is made up of two simple sentences with these glue words, because that's what I call them, supporting name junctions. They're glue words that stick the two sentences at, together and create a relationship between the two sentences. That's, that's pretty, I think that's an easier way of understanding it. Mm. Um, let me see. Okay. So we want to practice this. So we want to say, what is the independent clause? What is the dependent clause? And what is the um, um, subordinating conjunction? So I like Sally, simple sentence. She is funny, simple sentence, but I put them together and I have the word because between them and it's showing cause and effect. The reason I like Sally is that she's funny. Um, if I have the uh, dependent clause first, I have my glue word, my um, subordinating conjunction. This is the um, 
dependent clause. This is the independent clause, and it's this glue word that made it de the, this clause dependent. Um, the meeting is in progress, is still in progress. Pretty simple sentence. Kate will be late for dinner. But if I put since, it's also meaning, oh, there's a reason she's going to be late, right? And I can have the dependent clause first and the independent second, or I can have it the independent first and the dependent second. So this is simpler than saying, now write me a, a, a complex sentence. I'm having them identify the parts of th what I've just taught them. And then now just support, circle the subordinating conjunction underline the independent clause. Do you guys need to practice this at all or is it okay? I mean, we could stop and practice. Let's do this. Um, Joanne, in the first sentence, what's the um, subordinating conjunction in that first sentence? You have to unmute yourself though. I did. I, unless. Unless. So what's the dependent clause? Unless the rain stops soon. And the independent? We will have to postpone the picnic. Exactly. Okay. Um, Liz, you want to do the next one? What's the um, subordinating? And interesting, what does subordinating mean, for God's sake? Right? You're hot, right? It means that there's a relationship and one part of the relationship is not as strong as the other. So sometimes I use a seesaw idea of who's strongest and who's weakest. Um, okay. Um, Liz, so the, yeah. the conjunction would be although. Right. And, and the uh, independent is independent is sarah quit the basketball team mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the independent is although she had been one of the starting five exactly exactly um laura you want to do the next one um as though would be the um supporting conjunction no sorry the dependent clause uh-huh uh, the sky looks gray would be the dependent is it, it, is it the sorry? dependent or is it the independent? Sorry, I meant independent, <laughs> independent because it might snow, which is the dependent one. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's my brain. It's okay. It's late. Okay, cool. And I always, these, these conjunctions are function words, right? They really almost cannot be defined except in the context of a sentence. They're really hard to define. They're really like, you know, you got to go to the dictionary to be able to explain what these conjunctions mean in real life. Okay, Lisa, are you there? I don't think she is. Okay, so. Sorry, Sasha, I'm here. My knows is what my sinuses are coming so I don't oh, okay know. okay do you want to do the last one sweetie okay yeah sure um even those your subordinating conjunction yep. uh-huh even though our team came in second is your dependent yes clause, and then we felt like champion in champions is your independent clause right cool and one of the things that i learned from maureen Amon is Take a word or two out and then have them fill it in. Just give them little bits. Don't expect them to write a whole sentence immediately. It's just too, it's too much. Okay. So let's see what's after this. More. Okay. And this is just a simple thing. If you have your dependent clause first, you put a comma after it before the independent. And if you start with the independent, you don't use a comma. I will, um, I will send this um, 
PowerPoint to everybody tomorrow, okay? So you have it. Here is my to-do list. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, so that's just a graphic that shows where it can go. Either place. So here there's no comma. Here there is. Okay. And here's an example. You give half the sentence and then they finish it. Finish it. Add the dependent or independent. Uh, clause. Okay, so we could take this complex sentence and we could make it into a topic sentence. Um, and um, I think many of our kids don't understand that a topic sentence has really two parts. It has that what we're talking about, the topic, like baseball or um, hockey or care of dogs, and those are wide ranging. I mean, if we did a mind map, you could have the whole wall filled with things on those topics, right? But when you're writing, you can't write about all of that stuff that you put on the wall. You have to narrow it down to a few ideas that you're going to talk about. And that's the focus or the controlling idea. Um, Maureen Amon uses that idea, controlling idea. The controlling idea tells you what you can put in your paragraph or essay and what you can't. It's the focus. So if I'm talking about um, um, baseball, now I want to do puppies because I have a new puppy. If you're, <laughs> it's much more interesting. So if we're talking about care of, of puppies, we're talking about nutrition, we're talking about exercise, we're talking about you know immunizations, we're talking about teaching them be you know. Uh, how to be in the house. We're teaching them about obedience learning and, and commands. All of those things. If I did that, that would be pages and pages and pages and pages. I'm just going to talk about behaviors in the house because <laughs> that's really important today. <laughs> so you see, I've narrowed it down. I can't speak about everything in one paragraph or even one essay. So the whole idea of a topic and a controlling idea is something that you want to practice with your kids. So here's an example. Violence in America has several causes. Well, my topic is violence in America. And I'm not going to talk about what kind of guns are used or weapons or who does it. I'm going to only talk about the causes. So my topic is violence in America and my focus is what are the causes of that. A good architect is both an artist and a mathematician. So my topic is a good architect and I'm only going to talk about that the skills that architect has as an artist or a mathematician. Nothing else. Not where he went to school, not what kind of, you know, uh, uh, design he loves or, you know, the kinds of buildings he's built. I'm going to talk about who he is as an artist and who is he, he is or she is as a mathematician. So to tie this together, Probably the queen sentence of topic sentences with step up to writing is called an occasion position topic sentence. And it just happens to be a complex sentence format. 
Do you see why I put it in here now? Because we just learned about complex sentences. So I still think um, occasion and position are very abstract words. Um, so I sometimes talk about just topic and focus. Occasion would be topic and position would be focus. Um, and um, you want, oops, back again. So one of the things that I like about Step Up to Writing is they give you the subordinating conjunctions and you talk about the meaning of them and then you take a topic and what you're going to focus on and you play around with what it would it be if I put after as my subordinating conjunction or when or unless or as if or while how does that change the meaning of this topic so maybe we should do that I'm going to um, get a, a drink of water I bet other people would probably like to have a little bit of a break. I'm going to get a drink of water. Okay, we're going to play with this a little because it's no good me just talking at you. Okay. Okay, these are going to be our subordinating conjunctions. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you guys are going to each pick a topic. You, you can, it's something that you know a lot about, something that you've read, something that you're an expert in. I chose my puppy, um, but you're going to pick a, to a topic. So, um, Liz, what is what topic do you want to write about? A topic sentence about gardening. Admin. <laughs> gardening. No gardening. Oh, gardening. God forbid. Yeah, no, not admin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gardening. Why use no caps? Okay, and um, Lori, what is your topic? Um, baking. Baking. Ooh. Okay, and Joanne, what's your topic? Tutoring. Tutoring. Okay, and Lisa, are you participating? Yes, I am. I just care. Uh, books. Books. Okay. Okay, so these are very broad, wonderful topics. What we have to do is we have to narrow them. So, Liz. What is what are one or two parts of gardening uh, that you want to talk about? It might be something you really hate in gardening, or it might be something you really like. Um, vegetable gardening. <laughs> oh, vegetable gardening. Yeah. I bet you have a lot more sun than I do, and you can have vegetables, can't you? <laughs> Yeah, they're abundant at the moment. I was going to say we've got Becky on here as well. What? Oh, we've got Becky, Becky on here as well. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You forgot Becky. Oh, Becky. I couldn't see her. Becky, I have left you out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Boy. It, you know why is because um, I it's the, there wasn't enough room in the faces on the side. Becky, what's your what's your your topic? Healthy eating. Oh.
You're putting me to shame, Becky. You're putting me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. So, Lori, what about baking? What do you want to be talking about baking bread? Do you want to be talking about baking cookies? Do you want to be talking about baking cakes? Do you, what do you want to talk about in your say recipes? Oh, oh, okay. And, uh, Becky, what part of healthy eating are you going to be discussing in your, um, short paragraph about healthy eating? Um, types of foods. Okay, and I'm, I knew you were gonna say that. Um, could we narrow it down to um, something like proteins or vegetables or? Sure, let's do proteins. Okay, proteins. So you see that's a little more specific, right? Okay, Joanne, what part of tutoring are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about um, the types of activities one can do in tutoring? Are we going to talk about um, the, the different ages of students in tutoring and what they need? What are we going to talk about in tutoring? I was thinking of, I don't know whether this would be too broad, is um, my preparation for my oh. lessons. Oh. You know, how I prepare for my students. Okay. And mm -hmm. Lisa, what about books? How are you going to narrow focus that? <laughs> uh, the, the power of picture books. Oh, oh, I love it. Power of picture books. Um, okay. And I'm, I'm going to just ask this question because we're in a, the age of graphic novels. Are you talking uh -huh. about graphic novels or are you talking about children's pictures books? Children's picture books. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to model using your topics and um, um, and some of these conjunctions, and then I'm going to ask you to do the same and use two conjunctions. So I'm going to start with Liz's. Whenever I think of going out into my garden, I enjoy working with my vegetables. Um, even though there's many types of gardening um, hobbyists, I am interested in vegetable growing. Okay, so um, that would be when I, when I think of gardening, vegetable gardens are the type of gardens I like to create each year. Okay, Becky. <clears throat> Healthy eating is difficult to... Um, create a habit for until you understand how to eat proteins. Um, since healthy eating is important, understanding the types of proteins one must have is essential. Even though there are many cookbooks about baking, um, I, no, 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 no. Oh, even though there are many cookbooks about baking, finding recipes online from friends and in historic, um, novels is very exciting to me. <laughs> um, unless you know how to read a recipe well, baking can become a disaster. You guys get it? You get it? So is I can stick my coordinating conjunction any any anywhere, right? At the beginning or in the middle. But what I'm trying to do is I want to have those three elements, my topic, my focus, and a coordinating conjunction. So um, what I'd like each of you to do is to take just a little minute and to um, 
take your topic and controlling idea or focus and two different um, coordinate, subordinating conjunctions and write an occasion position, two, two occasion position topic sentences. And you can write the first part and write the second part and just change where you put the the coordinating conjunction or subordinating conjunction okay <laughs> Did you guys, I want to read something that I got today that I just got from one of the tutors who works with me. This is from uh, one of our shared students' moms. She said, I wanted to tell you something Lucas said yesterday when I asked him what was motivating his sudden interest in reading the Bible. He said, before I started working with David, my mind was like a box that was this big. After working with David and learning more vocabulary words, I could remember things and my mind was felt this big. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, just feel like if I read the Bible, my box would get bigger. Isn't that just so interesting? And uh, that it was such a testimony to learning words and vocabulary and how they work for him. And uh, she said, my secret mom prayers have been asked, answered. <laughs> it's very cool. Okay, let's hear your sentences. <laughs> we need to hear some good things like that, right? Yeah. Who can wants to go? A few? Yes. Oh, yeah, Sasha, can we have a few more minutes? I'm done writing the first one. I'm still struggling on the second one. Okay, okay. I'm going to get more water. You guys have, should be drinking water. <laughs> oh, the girl's up. Do you need to go outside? Or are you going to go back to sleep? Okay. 
go in my crate. You want to go in your crate? Introduce you to everybody. Oi, hiccups. This is this is Meg. Oh <laughs> this is Meg. <laughs> and she has the hiccups. Oi. She has the hiccups. Ready, Liz? Right, my <laughs> one. I, I'm wrangling a cat. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just Wait gone. Minute. I may have to take this girl out to pee because she just went <laughs> <up> really soon. <laughs> um, my first one was, unless you get vegetable plants into the ground in early September, you won't have fresh vegetables to pick at Christmas. Okay. Ooh, what a nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. After plant after planting new vegetable plants, you need to water them in. So you see this it's so interesting. You do you see how the way you frame these topic sentences tells you exactly what you can put in your paragraph and what you can't? Mm. That's the power of this whole thing of writing, taking a long time to write a topic sentence and understanding what it does. Okay, Lori, you want to try one? Sorry, it takes me a while to find okay. my mute button. <laughs> All right, my first one was, even though baking is very exciting, the thrill is finding the perfect recipe. Oh. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, my second one is, baking is very enjoyable since I found so many delightful and delicious recipes. And see, you would be talking about the delightful and delicious recipes, wouldn't you? A good crafted topic sentence makes writing really easy because then you put one, two, three things you want to talk about, your paragraph's done. Okay, Beck. Um, before people begin to eat healthy proteins, they may want to research what types of proteins are considered the healthiest. Wow. So you could have those different types, couldn't you? And then my second one's more fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pork bacon is delicious, although turkey bacon is healthier for people. <laughs> and you would be having like a compare and contrast uh, topic uh, uh, paragraph with that. You'd say, this is what it tastes like. This is what it tastes like. This is what you get from this one. This is what you get from that one. Cool. Cool. Joanne? I'm not sure if I, I did it. My first one was before planning a lesson, I must first determine the student's most pressing academic need. Once I have that need pinpointed, I'm ready to plan. Okay. And and that is exactly how we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you do write two or one? I did those those two. One. Oh, okay. 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 Great. Great. Okay, Lisa. Okay, mine's a bit long, but I'll read it. <laughs> Whenever life seems to throw me into situations that I don't think I can handle, I stop, breathe, take a step back, and pick up a picture book. As long as you have a dilemma, there's nothing a good picture book can't help solve. Okay, so you would be talking about the dilemmas in the second one, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, um, Hi, girl. What you doing? <laughs> is this this is called the, the 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 falling in love with a puppy? Okay, I'm going to share screen again, and I may. Is it pop? Would you guys be unhappy if I said I want to take a five minute break so I can take her out? Would you guys be upset with me? That's fine. Okay, because oh, she did have one accident today, and it was my fault. And I don't want her to have another one, right? Let's go out. Five minutes, guys. I'll be back.
It's good to see you again, Joanne. Hi, Becky. I don't think I don't think we've met, have we? Or maybe I forgot. Yeah, I've been on um last spring and last fall I was on for quite a few. So okay. I remember you. You gave lots of good information and shared a lot of things. So yes. Okay. I, it's Thank you for such much. wonderful things that you do share. So I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. No. So I, uh, I don't know if you got it, but I did put in the chat a little while ago. I've been compiling a list of um, SO, the Science of Reading resources. Um, it's in the chat. I had put it on the, maybe a couple minutes before we started. Let me know if you don't see it and I can add that. <coughs> oh. So this girl went out. <laughs> My Sasha, my sister trained her dog to ring a bell when they when I, they I know. Was, I don't know I how it's a wonderful do that. thing. <laughs> I wish I, don't I could know how do they do that. My my Sammy used to put his hand on the door and he would do that. So maybe Meg can learn that. But she was a very good girl. She went out and right away she peed. I think Megan, I should put you in your crate for a while. Come on. Come on, let's go in the crate. Come on. Time for crate. Come on. Be in your crate. Be in your super crate. No. No. Uh, earlier, um, Sasha mentioned William Van Cleve, and I have one, uh, one of his books. He was really great. It's so bad. I'm so sorry that he passed away. Um, but his book, The Writing Matters, is very, very good. It's and it starts really off with just the pronoun, you know, the, ver the parts of speech. And I also got this time, which... And he has book one. There's two books. This is book two I'm looking at right now. They're workbooks. And that comes in really handy and mm. when you're looking for sentences for practicing. So I am I have used this a lot. This is two. I'm still in one. But it's funny because tomorrow I'm going to go into sub. And what is her lesson on <laughs> complex sentences? <laughs> I love it. Not, so I had this out ready to bring with me. Uh -huh. uh, anyways, but his book is is just excellent, absolutely yeah. excellent. It's just it's like every page is golden. Every page is golden. Yeah, yeah. I use his book constantly when I'm lesson giving making lessons up. Yeah. Okay. Um, shall we go back and see? You'll have to tell me when you're full because you know I never stop. Um, but. Let's see what else I have after this. Oh, this is so cool. So this is a wonderful way of just showing um, what the topic is and what the controlling idea is. So making it just really graphic by putting it on a page and dividing the page in half and writing the topic of each sentence and the controlling idea on the other side. It's a really nice way to do it. Okay, and then, oh, see, I've done your lesson for you tomorrow, Joanne. <laughs> so you can um, start the sentences, but you leave some out and then they have to finish the sentence. So that's, again, another scaffolding device. And then, and this is really um, what I made you guys do, is a list of starter words and you create different 
um, topic sentences using the same topic and the same uh, focusing or controlling idea. Okay. And then um, just start, you know, every week um, writing a topic sentence for the different time of the year or a different topic. And here's one of the things that Maureen um, Almond really uh, focuses upon is um, gra um, two column notes for organizing your ideas before you write. So the topic is exercise and we could say we're going to talk about um, the benefits of exercise that's my that's the controlling idea or the narrowing focus and so we could give a reason that um, exercise is beneficial like it makes your heart work harder uh, a detail um, I like to do Pilates uh, and the and there's several things about Pilates I like a whole lot and a fact People who exercise um, are uh, cheerier, <laughs> have better moods because they have endorphins in their brain <laughs> or something like that. But you can have reasons uh, which answer why some there are different benefits. Details describe the benefits um, and the facts are research-based. So you can have a, a paragraph about exercise and its benefits, and you could only have three, you could have three reasons that it's beneficial, or you could describe the benefits. You could say, what does it do for you physically, um, emotionally, and uh, health-wise? And you could get facts, you could look up facts to tell why um, exercise is beneficial. So a really cool thing would be to go back Where are we? Where did we do our to this slide okay where you all had a topic and a controlling idea and you could take that topic and controlling idea and say can you name three reasons that children's books help you solve problems Liz can you name can you describe children's books that are helpful um could you make up some facts about <laughs> about uh why ch what children's books are are helpful one of them is they have such good vocabulary so why don't you guys try that come up with either reasons or details or facts or a combination for your topic so we're on the left side of our
Anybody ready to share? Nope. <laughs> Liz, Lisa? Oh, Lisa and Lori are ready. Okay. Lisa, you want to do yours first? Okay. Yeah, I just did one reason. Is that okay? Sure. But I expanded it quite a lot. Um, okay. I think I did end up thinking of changing my topic sentence after I found out it was very, it was much more challenging doing a dilemma than something else. Mm. <laughs> so I thought mm -hmm. for the main topic is going to be like, um, how it can teach you about life lessons. Uh huh. And this okay. is one of the biggest license, uh, the lessons I've learned since I've moved to Asia, which I don't think like growing up in Canada, we didn't know much about. And it's the importance of giving your parents an allowance every month. Oh, so here in Asia, when you when you start working, you're supposed to give your parents an allowance. Interesting. Uh, so I took that off of the book. There's a book that Tommy, Tommy, Tommy DePola has, uh -huh. and it's called Now One Foot, Now the Other. Uh -huh. And it talks about like a grandpa who teaches his grandson how to walk, how to eat everything when he's younger. And then one day his grandfather actually has a stroke. Mm. and then now it's his grandson's turn and he spends most of his like his grandfather's life trying to reteach him how to walk and reteach oh. him how to so it's about taking care of your loved ones sweet very um, so sweet. that yeah so that was my thing and then the detailed yeah it was the book and then in terms of the facts I found an article online here about how much money you should give to your can I share my screen for a minute Sasha sure okay. let's see oh okay Hello. God bless you Lori okay so I found this blog and it's uh -huh. really neat because it shows you a survey that they did uh-huh and on average so for Asians the moment that you start working is when you should be paying your parents money huh um and so they did a survey and for kids who are 18 to 20, they've just started on the career path. Uh -huh. On average, they'll give their parents about 160 sing, which is similar to Canadian dollars uh -huh. a month. And then as they get older and they make more money, then they give more. So by the time they're idea. by the time they're already 30s, they're usually giving about 500 a month. And then by the time you're 31 to 35, you're giving about 600 mm -hmm. and then 40 above, it's usually 700. And I think after 40, cause you made more of that money. Um, it's usually about a thousand, eight or 900. Hmm. Yeah. That's so. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So. And, and so what you really did is you talked about the emotional and you, and, and how it supported that, but you also got real facts. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and you probably, uh, could describe a situation, um, that is in the book that taught, well, you did because of the, the grandfather and the, and the uh, grandson. Yeah. That's very, that would be an amazing, amazing um, essay, wouldn't it? I think so. Yes, yeah. I hope so. I think but so. I just, you know, because this was when I remember when I first moved here with my husband, we would fight. I was like, why are you giving your parents money? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't something I understood. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but now I do the same. So even sweet. with my own parents back home in Canada. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Somebody else want to do theirs? And then we're pretty much done, guys. I'll yeah. jump in. Um, oh. Who's gonna go? <laughs> I believe you can have it. <laughs> okay. Right. So my topic sentence was the I use the, um, unless you get vegetable plants into the ground in early September, you won't have fresh veggies to pick by Christmas. So then I've added detail. September is the beginning of spring. The ground is warming up. There are more daylight hours and frosts are rare. So getting your vegetable plants in the ground at this time means the conditions are right for the seedlings. Okay lots of good details so you're you're saying if if we go back um in my mind i don't know if you would agree with me but in my mind um 
if we had this um, two column notes, um, you would you had descriptions and essentially you were doing ease because you were talking about the ground and, and you know the different conditions and it was the reason that you wanted to get it into the ground, wasn't it? To get your yeah, that was kind of included in my topic. Uh -huh. yep. So that's why I did the details rather than okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can see this stuff is can really help you um, explicitly and systematically teach writing skills, expository writing skills. And so in the um, um, the writing revolution, when I was reading that, these were the things that were going through my mind. There's lots of wonderful, wonderful ideas, but then I think we have to take that as a framework of saying, oh, and what resources do I have to teach this? And what resources do I have to teach this? And resources to teach that? Because it's, it's the, 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 uh, the teaching is in the details and the uh, activities that in the games. And actually, I don't think I do writing games. <laughs> I just have my kids write. Um, but yeah. So um, next month, um, am I correct, Liz, that, that you're going to be the lead person on vocabulary next month? Yep. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Okay, and we'll advertise it and, and bringing resources on vocabulary, everybody would be great. Um, but as uh, it's really was a timely little email uh, or text, wasn't it, about David's kid and how vocabulary made such a difference in his life? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ladies. Thank you for being here at these weird, weird hours, right? <laughs> and it's good to see everybody. Okay. I will see you next month. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.